A few weeks ago, I did a quick review and a how-to guide on Storage.io, the distributed cloud object storage platform and how it works. If you're interested, you can check out the link at the top right-hand corner here. Otherwise, today I'll be checking out Tardigrade.io, the Amazon S3 competitor that is powered by Storage.io. Hi, my name is Charles and welcome back to the channel. After my previous review of storage a few weeks ago, the Tardigrade folks actually reached out to me to see if I was keen to check out the IS3 platform. I have a full disclaimer here, they offered me a trial on the platform with no request for a review whatsoever, but I thought I'd do it anyway because I did get a couple of comments that wanted me to have a quick look at it. Oh by the way, if you want to be informed of future videos on the channel, please do hit subscribe and the notification bell. I try very much to churn out new content on a weekly basis as much as possible. Coming back to this, today I will walk you guys through how to set up Tardigrade, what are some of the use cases and what are my thoughts on it. For the setup, since Tardigrade has got quite a few integration reference guides as it is on their website, and I so happen to have Veeam running in the lab, I'll be doing a setup of Tardigrade and then have Veeam offload backups into Tardigrade. As always, I've also put up quick timelines in the descriptions below, so feel free to jump into the relevant sections. So for a start, you should actually check out the documentation site on Tardigrade.io. It's got a lot of useful information and it's probably the best place to start before you do any installation. And it's also good that you might want to consider downloading the CLI uh, package. So it comes in flavors of Mac, Linux and also Windows. There's some prerequisites that you need for the S3 gateways, but it's fairly straightforward. But let's pull down the Docker image. So I'll just cut and paste that into my console. It shouldn't take very long. So now that it's complete, we'll look into uh, configuring it. So we're just going to cut and paste another line here. Bring on my console. Uh, so I usually like to kind of put it on my text because uh, I need to make some edits. In this case, I'm actually adding my NAS folder where I'm going to install it. I'll then cut and paste this into the console and run it. It should give me the three satellites. I'll pick Asia as this is nearest to me, punch in my API keys and just follow the on-screen instructions. And it's done. So the next part we will run the service. So again, I'll go back to run gateway, cut and paste and make some slight edits here. Once the service is started, it should give you an endpoint and the access and secret key. So with that, that's pretty much all there is to the S3 gateway. Jumping into Veeam, we will set up Tardigrade as an S3 backup repository. So we click add repository, object storage, and we click S3 compatible. We'll give it a name, uh, in this case Tardigrade, go next. So the service point for the IP. Just a slight note here, Veeam actually requires an S3 target service point to be secured via SSL and target gateways are only running off HTTP. So I have to set up a separate Nginx reverse proxy to redirect HTTPS to HTTP traffic. So just a small adjustment. So put in the credentials, go next. You should pick up a default bucket because I only have one. Uh, then select the folder where you want the backups to go to. Go next. Just gonna wait for a quick bit. So that's done. So with that, we'll click finish and next we'll set up scale out repositories. This is where we configure how long we want backups to stay on a hot tier before staging out to a long-term archive tier like Tardigrade. So first we pick our hot tier, we just go with the defaults. We want to extend this to Tardigrade and we can change this in this case, maybe I'll put 60 days and go apply. Just gotta wait for it. And it's done. So that concludes our demo of setting up Tardigrade as a long term archive for Veeam backup. Let's look at some use cases with regards to S3 storage or Tardigrade. The use case I've demonstrated today specifically is backup staging to Tardigrade. I believe that it's the simplest and easiest use case as most backup software have the capabilities to tier to an S3 target of sorts. As cloud storage pricing continues to become more cost effective, backing up to the cloud becomes a lot more feasible. It could also be used as an extension to on-prem storage capacity functioning as a cloud tier. For example, data that hasn't been accessed for a year or more can be pushed to a tardigrade tier for long-term archive as well. 
The other popular use cases that come to mind will be for developers. Given the rise of containers and Kubernetes deployments, there are more asks around the need for persistent storage. I can see how Tardigrid can easily fit in here. The simplified approach without the need to set up any infrastructure makes this easily adopted and turned on. Another common use case that many S3-like platforms like Tardigrid often have is the ability to store large files, media, photos, and etc. They then can extend that to a file sharing-like capability like you are familiar with Dropbox or OneDrive. I didn't explore the capability and possibility of this, but I'm assuming it's possible given the MinIO front end, and I've used MinIO before, and it's definitely possible there. Of course, there are more use cases which you guys can check out at the Tardigrid website, but the above are some of those that would interest the enterprises that are potentially looking at S3 use cases. So here are my thoughts. To be honest, I was quite surprised how little effort it took to set it up. I mean, I did have a little bit of issues initially, but it's really my fault there. I would normally try to set things up with minimal documentation because who likes to read documentation? But I guess I should have read it anyway. The UI for Tardigrade was a little spartan though if you ask me. It is just really reporting storage utilization, bucket creation and such is largely driven from the CLI. It would be great to have the ability to do bucket management and browsing of some of the files from the web UI as well. I'm sure they'll be working on that. But for now, you can use MinIO. I know Tardigrid stated on their website that their pricing per TV is more cost effective compared to AWS and Google. I did a little bit of check and comparison and validated that it is as claimed. But of course, AWS offers a couple of different tiers of S3 targets. For example, the S3 Infrequent Access or S3 IA tier is about the same price as Tardigrid. But bear in mind that it is targeted for potentially long-term archive and as the name suggests, Infrequent Access also means less performance. So the bottom line? Would I recommend Tardigrade? Definitely. The solution works, it's simple, and it's a good alternative to AWS. And I can only see it getting better over time. Hopefully you guys have gotten some insight as to how Tardigrade works and looks like. Again, I don't have any special links for you to sign on because again, it's not a promotional video of sorts and I'm not getting anything out of this. So with that, thanks again for watching and I'll see you again next time.